The next thing is this one called a percentage lease. A percentage lease is where the landlord charges the tenant a percentage of the income that is generated by that tenant. Once again, this is a commercial lease and is very common in retail or restaurant so that the tenant, if they have a really good year, their lease may go up. If they're having a poor year, their lease could potentially be lower. And I told you that I brokered the marsh um, sale over there. So let me ask you a question. They were on a percentage lease. I read the lease. And we talked about my favorite quote by Potter Stewart is, I cannot define pornography, but I know it when I see it. In Marsh, Marsh's percentage lease, they were supposed to pay $11,833 a month plus 4% of any amount of money over a million dollars in sales of groceries. So their lease literally stated they have what's called a base plus 4% of anything over a million dollars in groceries. And my favorite quote was, I cannot define pornography, but I know when I see it. So let me ask you, what are groceries? You think you know what they are? Can you define them? Because it took March nine pages to define what groceries were. Things like lottery didn't count. Floral didn't count. Magazines didn't count. Candy didn't count. Deli didn't count. If you walked into that marsh and bought a bologna sandwich out of the deli case, that would not count as a grocery sale. But if you walked into the aisle and bought a loaf of bread and a pack of bologna and walked out the parking lot and ate it, that would be a grocery sale. So they pay 4% of anything over a million dollars in groceries. That is a typical percentage lease. As their sales go up, the landlord goes up because they are collecting a percentage of the tenant's sales. Now, there's one key here on the exam and in the real world. Watch for this word right there. Because it could say plus, or it could say, or a percentage. So it, in Marsh's case, it said $11,833 plus 4%. It could say $11,833 or 4% of the sales, whichever is the greater of the two. So watch that on the exam. Does it say plus or or? Was there a question, Cameron? No? Okay. So just watch that. Now, in that million dollars that I just mentioned, that is what they call the floor. So if they sell less than a million, there is no overage being paid. All right, so think of the floor as like the minimum amount. That's literally what a floor is. It's the bottom or the base. If the tenant doesn't reach that floor, then there's no overage paid. If they do reach that floor, then they only pay on the overage. So if they sold 1.2 and their floor was a million, they would only pay 4% of that 
$200,000, right? If their sales was 1,200 and their floor is a million, they would only pay on the overage. So 4% of 200 grand would be another $8,000. That is an annual payment. You divide that by 12, and that would be like another 666. That would be added to that because this is a plus. Got it? So watch out on the test. Does it say a base plus a percentage? Or does it say a base or a percentage? Typically when it says or, you get that other verbiage added in. Base or a percentage, whichever is the greater of the two. So if it's an or in there, they would not pay both of them. They would just pay one or the other. That way it never goes below a base. Cool? <laughs> Top of the next page, there's a term called a variable lease. A variable lease just means it's scheduled to change inside of the lease. May start at one price, may start, end at another. And there are two types of variable leases. One is called a graduated, where it just goes up. We started at the school on a variable lease. We did the first six months at a discounted rate. And then in the seventh month, it jumped up. And that was the landlord allowing us to get started as a new business. All right. There is what they call an index lease. I have never seen a lease based on an index except on the exam you're about to take, all right? This is where the lease is tied to some financial index, much like the ARM loan was. Remember on the ARM, the adjustable rate, it was tied to some financial index? They have leases that are tied to a financial index, like the consumer price index or the 10-year treasury note or whatever they want to define. I have never seen one. I have never seen the entire lease based on an index. All right. Thumbs up. All right, let me clarify one thing. Remember, we are in class. So try and keep the focus and the attention because I see a lot of deer in the headlight looks and I wanna make sure you guys are keeping up with me, okay? On page 336, there are some other leases I wanna talk about that we have mentioned or touched on them a couple times. The first one being this thing, and I can't remember which one of you guys brought this up, it's called a ground lease. This is where the tenant or the owner of the building, the structure. They may own the building, but it's sitting on a leased property. They are leasing the ground, all right? They own the building. Remember the very first day we talked about airspace and I showed you a couple of examples like Simon owns the building, but they're leasing the ground it sits on. That would be a ground lease. White Castle does this a lot. What is the advantage to a commercial, in the commercial world, to a company leasing land rather than owning it? There are two huge major advantages. Anybody want to shoot one out and take, care to take a guess? 
if they decide to move, they don't have to go through the hassle of selling it. OK, so there may be three advantages. That's not one that I was thinking of, but that's potentially a good one. It is a financial trick. OK, think of the Greenwood Park Mall. All right. All of those properties that lay on the fringe of the mall, Chili's, the movie theater, um, Jared's, they are leasing that land. What can you not do with your taxes and land? I said this briefly just one time. Remember, you cannot depreciate land very important matter of fact i want you to write that down because this is a concept you need to understand in several different areas in the cost approach yesterday with the appraisals and we remember we figured straight line depreciation what was the first thing we did in that section we took the value of the land out and only talked about the structure right because you cannot depreciate the value of land. You cannot write it off because it's always going to work more in the future. We tie in several different chapters. All right. So now think about Chili's, the restaurant Chili's. They own it, they own that land and they spend a million dollars for it. They do not get to depreciate it because you what? Cannot depreciate land. But if I'm renting it from somebody, guess what? That rental fee is now an expense and I get to write that off on my taxes. So Chili's could spend $10,000 a month on a loan to buy the land, which they can't write off because you can't depreciate land. Or they could pay 10,000 a month and rent the property from Simon. And now guess what they get to do with that monthly rent? They can write it off their taxes. So a lot of commercial companies love land leases because one, if they own it, it really does no good for them on the taxes. And two, it's an expense that they get to write off against active income, i.e. selling burgers. Plus, kind of what Christina was saying, if Chili's had to buy that piece of property, that's a million dollars gone. For what? Land. But I could use that million now and make better hamburgers or pay my people more or build a bigger building because I'm not buying the property. So a land lease has a lot of options for people, mainly in the fact that they get to expense the cost of the rent where they cannot deduct the or depreciate, deduct the depreciation because you cannot depreciate land. 